So let's get down to the nuts and bolts of actually creating some shadow diagrams. Uh, to do this we'll again be using the Kennedy Associates uh, model and we'll switch to that file now and uh, if you'd watched the overview movie you will have seen this model. Uh, essentially we have uh, some townhouses here that uh, are the proposed development on either side we have adjoining properties that have been modelled as well and we have this site model here just to show you that in uh, say an ISO view uh, you can see the model here um, this is the proposed development here and uh, and the other buildings on either side of it all right so back in that uh, in that top plan view we've got our heliodons placed in the drawing here and we'll just be using these six but uh, Typically you may need to use more than this. Um, and these are all fairly self-explanatory. The only thing um, that I've done here for the uh, for the summer solstice, um, when the sun is higher in the sky, I want to set the sun brightness just down to 100%, which is the default setting. And for the winter solstice, I'm going to increase that to 200 and this is just going to balance out the appearance of the uh, of the shadows and the and the ground around the shadows a little bit between winter and summer uh, you don't have to do that if you don't want to alright so back to our plan view and we're going to begin with uh, this here which is sorry this one here which is uh, 9am in the summer solstice and as of uh, Vectorworks 2012 SP1 we've added some renderwork styles that I'm going to be using here um, we just missed the cut with SP0 but we'll get them into SP1 so they'll be there so don't be surprised if you go looking for them before SP1 comes out and you don't uh, you don't see them there so renderwork styles can be accessed from this drop down menu here and you'll see this is going to go off the page uh, but that's where you can access them from directly and you'll also see that you can access them from up here uh, which is what I'll use because they're visible um, so these are the ones that we've added um, blue uh, blue shadows dark shadows gray and red shadows so with the dark shadows this is actually a realistic uh, photorealistic render and this one in these ones you can actually define the shadow color but these set up basically everything you need uh, in the rendering so let's begin by just using the dark shadows one so we're going to set that um, as the render mode and that will render on this layer with those settings okay using the active heliodon which is December 22 9 a.m. you can see that one's on and all the others are off be careful you don't click in this column here because clicking in this column will turn the shadow casting off now just to give you uh, a sense of those other render styles and we'll be looking at these a bit later on if we go to render style and say the red shadows this takes a little bit longer to render um, but you can see this way we can produce something that uh, will make the shadows a distinctive color and that can be useful when you're comparing existing to proposed and we'll talk about that um, a bit later alright so we want for this one the render work style of and here we are up the top now because we've now imported these into our document dark shadows and that's going to change everything that's needed to produce the shadows that look just like that so we're happy with how this looks so let's go ahead now and produce a viewport for our first shadow diagram so we go to create viewport and we're going to create it on the sheet layer that we've created already called WD5 shadow diagrams uh, I want the layer scale to be 1 to 200. Uh, its top 
we've got the, the render work style is nominated here, it's the dark shadows one there's no background uh, so everything here is, is pretty well right let's just click OK and there's our, our first shadow diagram. Now what I like to do with these shadow diagrams, and just to confirm that you need to click the update button for this to render and this will take a bit longer to render because we have the DPI for the sheet layer set at 150 and when you render on design layers the DPI is 72 and you do that uh, in, um, in the organization dialog you'll see here DPI 150 and if you want to change that you can click edit and that's the value there. You don't ever want to go more than you need with this value because this determines how many pixels there are in this rendering and the number of pixels determines how long the, the uh, scene takes to render. So more pixels, longer to render. Um, Alright, so what I also like to do is to take a heliodon and just put it on this object so that it indicates um, the uh, you know what um, details there are that that, that this particular um, sun study is showing. So let's go ahead and just put a heliodon on there. And heliodons uh, have the ability to just behave as a 2D graphic. The default value is to also include a 3D light. That's, that word's just off there. Um, but for, for for this sheet layer I want this to just say 2D graphic and then there's no light being created and no confusion in the document um, and also that will mean that if there's no light then uh, this heliodon won't appear in the list because it doesn't contain a light so that's important. So just zooming in on this a little bit now obviously the orientation here is a little wrong so I'm just going to correct that. I guess I could look at the value and, and enter in that rotation value from my design layer but let's just get an approximation of it there. And uh, I might center this text. Now if you want to show a bit more um, information here uh, you can come up here and go show Oops, we can go here and add all of the other information that is uh, that might be relevant for this particular uh, date and time of day and uh, we can have that there and the only other thing we need is the correct date alright so we've got our first shadow diagram here and I'm just going to place that up here so what I'll do now is to duplicate this once and twice and then we'll change this to be 12 so you just got to type a 12 in there and we're going to change this to be 3 then we need to do the same with these viewports so we need to change this viewport via this you see selected viewports so we don't want it to be 9am anymore we want it to be 12 and then for this viewport we want this to be 3 so turn on 3 turn off 9 so we should be good to go with those now let's select them and click update and this will go through and update those That's the first one and the second one. Now again this is taking a bit longer because I have the 150 DPI set. Alright, so now I'm going to select all and duplicate these again and we do that holding the Alt or Option key down and just drag the, the duplicates down here and I'll just move my page up a little bit so we've got to make some adjustments now so these heliodons are all going to have the winter solstice so I can come in here and set that to June 21 and the times are all correct we've got 9, 12, 
and 3 so we just need to change the viewports now so again we go to visualization and this one's going to be 9 a.m. so we turn on that one turn off that one and the second one is 12 so we're going to turn on 12 and turn off that 12 and this one needs to be off there and on there so just do a fit to page and I'll select these three viewports click update and these will go through an update um, now you can see that uh, here that the the ground is a bit lighter now um, this is because we set the intensity of the light for this heliodon at um, 200 so if the if you find this a bit too bright then you can always go back to the heliodons and adjust them down a bit what I was trying to do is just to get a, a balance of, of the greens in this and I've probably gone a bit over the top with these but you'll see with this one that's um, later in the day the sun's lower in the sky so there's less intensity so just be aware of that if you if you want to uh, adjust any of those things now the default setting for the heliodons is to have um, soft shadows and this is a realistic way of showing shadows because the further you get away from the building the more fuzzy the shadow becomes and this is important because if you're looking at you know uh, adjoining owners and things like that will go to the council and take out a scale rule and measure to the nth degree and and it's actually not clear where the actual line is and by by making that uh, by you know including the soft shadows in the shadow diagram you actually are indicating that you know this is not a hard and, and fast um, line in in the dirt but again you can turn that off uh, on the heliodon you'll see if I select this one here soft shadows obviously this one is not casting the light this is just a graphic but if we went back to the design layer that's the option that you would turn off now the other thing that you may want to do with the shadow diagrams is to show the line work on them and this is an option um, if you select a viewport the background render we've talked about we've used the render style this is the dark shadows one but you can also set a foreground render mode so if we set this to hidden line and then we click on foreground render settings there's a couple of things that I would recommend changing here and you might want to build this into your renderworks render style if you want to no, sorry you can't build it into the renderworks render style it's part of the viewport my mistake um, we don't want the line work to show on the uh, site model here so I'm going to set this smoothie angle to 120 if you want to generate intersecting lines that often don't show like for these valleys and things like that you can turn that on and if you just want to soften the lines a little bit uh, we can set a, a sketch style and and something like careful is, is not a bad one so click OK and then we can update this and you can see that we've now got some some line work on here and it just adds a bit of definition to the um, to the to the model um, if you don't want the sketch obviously that's uh, that's up to you uh, so really that's how you uh, you produce the the shadow diagrams um, there'll be a, a an extra movie on just a few variations of this and one of those things will be uh, looking at existing and proposed shadows and a couple of other little tricks